All right, guys, if you've been following along, you'll know that we have 2,500 watts of solar on the roof, two Victron inverters, 24 volt batteries that equal 20,000 watt hours. What do we do differently? What could we change? We got a lot of questions about like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? So we're gonna go over those. So stick around, check it out. Hey guys, I'm Chris. This is the Salty Trips channel. We're gonna talk about the solar system and inverters and batteries and all that stuff today. What we would have done differently and to answer some of the questions that you guys have kind of asked. For you, for you guys that are new, we'll just kind of go over the, you know, the progression of things. Well, we started out with just one Victron 24 volt, 3000 VA, two by 120 inverter. And we had one 24 volt, 200 amp hour battery. If it was 12 volts, that would equal 400 amp hours of battery. So even though it's 24 volt, 200 amp hours, it's still the same amount as 12 volt, 400 amp hours for you guys that are you know, following the 12 volt systems, uh, just to help you out. For the same amount of power, you run half the amps that you do with a 12 volt system. And of course, the higher the amps, the more amps you're pushing, the more heat you create. And I've seen other people with systems that had to put fans to vent things and stuff like that. We didn't wanna to have to deal with that. So, and ours has been running cool for quite some time now. Uh, we've done several tests on it and never really gets hot except for in one situation, which we'll go over in just a minute and we have a solution for that. That's one of the things we would have done differently. We'll get to that in just a second. But the progression is we start out with that just because we want to run our refrigerator because we have a residential refrigerator that runs on 110 power, doesn't have propane, doesn't run on 12 volt or nothing like that. So we have to have an, an inverter for it. The refrigerator will stay cool when we're going from place to place. And then it kind of progressed and we realized we wanted to do more off grid. We were worried about the, the puppies. Like we had some power issues, uh, system issues with uh, some of the RV parks that we were staying at where we've lost power in storms and we've had twice breakers just die on us for no reason. And we wanted a system where like if the power goes out, the inverters will take over, especially in the hot summers and the air conditioners will stay running for at least a while full so that we don't have any issues with them overheating, especially in these Florida summers. So then we started getting more batteries. We already had one lead time, 24 volt, 200 amp hour battery. Lead time reached out to us. So we got our second battery for free and we installed that. We ran some tests. If you guys can go back and follow those. After running those tests, I decided that wasn't enough. Like I want, we wanted to be able to run the RV through the night and at least one AC. But we still, like I said, we wanted to run both ACs in case of power outages and stuff like that. So then we got a third battery that we paid for ourselves from uh, lead time. And then we also added a second inverter and we ran it in parallel. And we have videos of installing those and installing the parallel inverters and all that and how, how all that comes together. So if you wanna go back and check those out, I'll leave those, that link in the description area below. Well, that brings us to, then, then we installed the solar on the roof. We got 10 250 watt uh, rich solar panels and we installed two series of five in parallel. So that's 10 total, uh, a series on this side and a series of five on this side. So far, those things have been you know, running well. Uh, we do get a little shade here, so and it's not running like as efficiently as I would hope so, but like you know, we're not in full sun. But so far, so good. Everything's running like it's supposed to. And we also got rid of our 12 volt batteries and went with 24 to 12 volt Orion converters to run all our 12 volt systems. So we put that in there too. And people were wanting it to know if like, if that's gonna run our jacks and our slides and stuff like that. And I showed in a previous video when we moved, it ran everything just fine. It was just never hurting for power. There's plenty of power. So all that stuff is good. So what would I have done differently? The first thing that comes to mind is when I wired up the, the Victron inverter to the breaker box, I watched several other like professionals installations and what they did was was what I did in the in the my first install is they just did a big wire nut taped everything up real good and shoved it back in there and it, that's what I did I did too and it works it's working great it has not failed or anything but I probably would have gone back if I would have known uh about these dinkle connectors which I used in the if you saw in the parallel build I found these dinkle connectors uh, make it real easy to connect those together and I could have put it in a box. It would have been considered safer, I guess, 
even though we haven't had any issues with this. But the other thing is too, is I was thinking about, instead of uh, uh, putting the Dinkle connectors in a box there, I was thinking about just taking Watchdog EMS and connecting it right there, because you have to split it anyway. So we have a Watchdog surge protector outside, and then this one would be a permanent one inside, but we already spent the money on that one, so I don't want to buy another one. But we're I may go back and change them to Dinkle connectors and put it in a box, but everything's working great now. There's zero issues. Everything's still tight. I've checked it. Everything's wrapped up, and it doesn't get hot. Uh, all the connections are really good, so I'm not really too worried about it. But if I would have do it or have to do over again, I would have done one of those two things, either the Dinkle connectors in a box, or I would have put a watchdog EMS system in there. And when I started this build, one of the things is like, you know, I thought I had plenty of room in that bay in the front to just kind of do whatever I want. So I just kind of, I didn't plan too far ahead and I just kind of threw things up in there. But every time I added something, I had to move things around a bit more. So like, I wish I would have watched a little more videos and thought a little more ahead. I'm like, but of course, as it got bigger, I had to keep moving things. <laughs> so if I would have planned a little more ahead, I would have left room for that second inverter first it's still a little cluttered in there. I would like to move the 24 volt to 12 volt converters over into the corner there and leave another space because we may add more solar eventually. There's a reason why we didn't add more solar from the get-go on the roof. And we'll go over that in just a second. Ideally, I would have planned ahead a little bit better so I didn't have to keep moving things as much. So you may want to think about that. All right, so we ran into a little issue with heat in one particular situation. Well, we have the we had the three 24 volt 280 hour batteries, which is about 15,000 watt hours. When we we're discharging and charging at high rates, temperature sensor on the battery, that temperature was really getting up there. Here you can see it was probably almost up to like about 114 degrees in this in this one, but we saw it go all the way up to like 120, and 120 or more gets to be a little pushing the limits. So I was not happy about that. There was a bottleneck somewhere right there. So we were planning to get a fourth battery anyway. So this is kind of how that went. We added another battery and we solved our heat issue. So I went and I got one more 24 volt, 200 amp hour battery. So that'll give us four of these things. And that's over 20,000 watt hours of power. And you know, they're fairly light and small compared to a lot of these other batteries, especially for as much juice as you get out of them. Uh, so we went ahead and got one more. And because we got one more and that's gonna make four, I didn't wanna parallel them together uh, with just wires. So we got a Lynx power distributor. And then to make that, to help equalize all the, the, the batteries, we just have equal length two watt cable going from the, the distributor to each battery. We'll get this installed and I'll show you how we do that. All right, first thing we're gonna do is take this off sustain mode. Go to Able Settings, ZZZ, Z is here. Go to your Multi Plus, click on this. Go to Advanced, Prioritize Other Energy Sources. Just unclick that and it goes back to regular charging. I preface this with Make sure your battery switches off to these two cables over here. Um, you know, 24 volts isn't going to kill you. I think when you get up to 32 volts, uh, if you touch them, <laughs> that's when you start to have problems. 12 and 24 volts are relatively safe. I say relatively because there's always the exception. So just take your proper precautions. All we got left is the positive and negative over here. All 
All right, so there we have it, guys. Four 24 volt, 200 amp hours. That's the equivalent of 16 Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries. And I got the temperature gauge on the negative right here in the middle. So hopefully if, you know, it'll keep track of that pretty well. And all these wires are equal length. So distribution of amps should be pretty equal to one another. And got four out cables going in and out. We should not have zero heat issues with wiring. We still had a little two watt cable going in between the disconnect and the Lynx 1000 shunt. I wasn't happy about that. So I did buy a little copper bar and drilled a couple holes in it because I wanted to try to mount the switch onto the Lynx shunt, but it, it was too big and it wouldn't fit. So I had to have a little spacer to go in between it. So we took the little copper bar, I drilled some holes in it, it was, and we just bolted that into place. All right, so we added another battery. We added the Lynx power distributor so it gets even flow to all the batteries and keeps them you know, level with one another. And we added the four aught cables all the way from the shunt back to the batteries, which has helped tremendously. Now our temperatures, like uh, we, we were doing a load test and we weren't getting uh, much over like 85 degrees. 87, I think, was the highest I saw. Uh, it was, and that's barely just above ambient temperature at the time of this this little test we did. I wish I had one of those little uh, thermal cameras so we could see exactly what, because that's kind of cool to see. But uh, so far, every nothing's really even warm to the touch. My inverters don't really get hot. They're even at 4,000 watts. They're still pretty cool to the touch. It's it gets warm but not hot. But so far, so good. All right, at this point, we're gonna answer a few questions that we got in the comment sections and on social media and stuff like that. And then we're gonna talk about how we may plan to add solar and why we didn't add more to begin with. And that's gonna tie into one of the questions that we have coming up. Uh, a lot of people ask, well, if you went 24 volt, why didn't you just go 48 volt? And the answer to that is pretty much the solar power. Uh, when you go 48 volt, you need an array, a pretty big array that that gets over 100 volts because I think uh, the 48 volts they recommend you you go about 115 volts or something like that. 24 volts is a little less dangerous than 48 volts <laughs> if you if you accidentally touch something. But uh, other than that, mostly it's just because of this solar array. It's a lot easier to jam, you know, 80, 90 volts that I'm getting like right now down to the 27 volts it needs to or 28 volts it needs to charge the batteries. That was one of the reasons is basically just because of the solar array if we had more room for solar maybe or and, and be able to put more in series or something like that and increase the voltage then that probably might have been a, a good thought because you, you know when you go from 12 volt to 24 volts you cut those amps in half when you go from 24 volt to 48 volts you cut those amps in half again so they it really lowers the amps you can use a lot smaller wire there's a lot less heat buildup that is still a good option if you want to build a large system like we did with, with two inverters. 48 volt might be the way to go. But if you have a smaller system and you only want to run maybe like 12 volt, 400 amp hours of batteries and one inverter, uh, yeah, just go 12 volt. But if you're going to anything like bigger or dual inverters, go with the 24 volt or higher. It's going to keep everything cooler, a lot smaller wires. So hopefully, you know, that that's the reason why there you go and then i got another question why we didn't put more solar on the roof there was people like oh that's so you know garbage you buy used uh residential panels you know the big ones and just fill your whole roof up build like the framing network so that it covers everything you can go to tip to tip well we can't afford that weight this is a a mid-profile fifth wheel and so we don't have a ton of cargo capacity, not as much as some of the bigger full profile fifth wheels that have, you know, three or 4,000 pounds of payload smaller. So right now with our batteries, our inverters, and all the solar we have right now, minus getting rid of the 12 volt lead acid batteries, we have a net gain of about 580 pounds to the RV. And that's basically like a third of our payload. If we have full tanks, will probably be over, maybe a little over payload. So we don't want to add any more weight to this 
And that was uh, one of the major reasons why we didn't put more solar on the roof. If we, we're gonna get like a small generator, and if we need to supplement power, we're gonna do it with a generator. But we also want to maybe add more solar, but I just, you know, am I contradicting myself? I can't add solar because it's gonna be more weight. But here's the thing that we've th been thinking about. If we add something, we gotta take something off. And I don't know why people haven't thought about this before, and we don't see this more often, but like on our dining room slide over here, we have an awning that we never use for that. That weighs about 100 pounds. I looked up online how much a you know awning that size weighs, and it's about 100 pounds. And if I could put two more solar panels on there that flip up, I could add two more solar panels, and that would probably equal equal about the same amount of weight. So I could take that off and add more solar panels, and maybe get you know another seven eight hundred watts of solar. And it'll also add as a shade for the windows. How does that make sense to you guys? Do you, you think that would be a good idea? Do you see any drawbacks? I think it would be a fantastic idea. Like right here, it would not be great because uh, that side is covered by shade. But like when we get out somewhere, we flip those things up and you'll get, you know, a good bit of sun for most of the day if you've got direct sunlight and you can be able to tilt them a little bit too. That is another option. And also technology is changing and stuff like that. And now they're coming out with all these awnings that double as solar panels and that way where it just equals out then that would be a great idea too and we're kind of following along some of those and see how they do in the future because that's a uh, brand new technology they're you know being able to roll up and roll out time and time again and see how long they last so we don't want to invest quite a bit in that much yet but I'm definitely thinking about adding ones on the slide out to flip up over the windows. But we'll see about that in the future. If you guys are interested in that, and uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Those are the big questions that we've been getting about our system is, you know, why we didn't go 48 volts and why we didn't add more solar. And those are the, that's your answers right there. If you've got any more questions about our system, just leave them down in the comment section below and we'll get to them. Hopefully this was helpful and you found it useful. Thanks for coming along, guys. Subscribe if you're new. Please give this video a big thumbs up. We really appreciate it because we appreciate you guys. And hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.